what is going on everyone in today's video I'm gonna do the unboxing and review of this brand new Toshiba flat tube TV model number 24 AF 46 from 2006 that's right everyone I just recently picked this up at a local thrift store for only $25 brand new sealed and basically what I'm gonna do is open this up go over the specs and then plug it into some of the old school gaming systems as well as a PC to see how awesome is the picture on this flat tube TV now before that please don't forget to like share and subscribe down below and thank you for watching all right so let's get right to it we're unboxing right now the Toshiba flat tube TV 24 inch this thing weighs around 70 pounds not bad at all could lift the box really on my own but taking it out might need a little help here so what do we got here we got the usual manual remote controller with some old batteries uh, I wonder if they still work or they start bleeding it might look like they're they bled through there we'll see not important the packaging looks pretty good stuffers here it's pretty sturdy all right put that to the side okay so these this TV looks like it's got nice little hand grips go ahead right there go right here see this yeah. right. we're just gonna put it right on the cap that's not bad perfect right there Hopefully this thing works. All right. Mm. Very nice. And by the way, wow. By the way, the 24 inch is really like the perfect size, in my opinion. Um, there's the 14 inch. That's kind of too too small and then when you go 27 32 35 inch they become extremely heavy and big but the way this is designed it's really not that bad oh look at that beautiful wow amazing well hopefully it works <laughs> everything looks just right here so all right so I'm gonna go ahead and try to plug something in and uh, we'll see what happens so stay tuned for that all right so let me go over the specs on this thing uh, here you can see we have a front panel that has the RCA connections and an audio uh, jack right there and here are the specs 24 inch flat tube digital three line comb filter color stream which is the component cable uh, connection to it and the BBE sound clarity enhancer uh, and there's the glow in a dark remote controller and of course the batteries are shot I'm gonna need to get some new ones they bled out and uh, corroded but the controller isn't brand new shape perfect so that's a good thing that they keep the batteries always separate okay let's uh, now take a look in the back all right so now let's go over the back connections uh, going from the right to the left uh, we have the RCA out and then next is component in then RCA in and also another one to the left RCA in as well and one S video and as well as the antenna connection there pretty much standard for this type of a TV that you could expect back in the day um, plenty of connections uh, perfect I think for uh, retro gaming and the size is just right this is really not a big bulky TV 
uh, I'm, I really like the size. So basically what I'm going to do now is try some adapters and uh, hopefully they'll work with this connected to a PC and also probably connected to a maybe like a GameCube or something like that. Uh, we'll see how it looks. So stay tuned for that. So now I'm going to show you the few hidden menus that this TV has, which definitely a must in order for you to get the best out of this TV, uh, especially when it comes to calibrating the colors and the geometry of the picture because with every different input uh, you might get a different picture size and it, this really takes a lot of time. So this is the manufacturer special menu and you, you get there by bringing the volume all the way to zero and while you do that you go ahead and press and hold 9 and bam this is the the main menu that you're going to use uh, to get the right positioning of the screen and mess around with the coloring uh, this really could take hours or even days to get it right so what I noticed is every time I'm utilizing different connections to different sources uh, the geometry the shape of the screen changes so you you may have to go back and forth a few times here and there to get it just right and uh, you just use channel up and down to basically scroll through the menus here there's quite a few positioning ones and there's a bunch of coloring and different things like that you can mess around with which I'm not going to show you you know how to do that because it's really up to you so this is one of the menu and then you hit menu enter to escape this is the second uh, manufacturer menu same thing you hold the volume down make sure it's at zero and then you go ahead and hit six hold it down for a few seconds bam here we are this is the other menu um, not 100% sure what this is all about uh, but I know at least one thing it shows you is the usage hours of this TV and in this case uh, it's definitely less than 10 hours as this is brand new and what other features you could look it up online yourself but I just wanted to show you this uh, menus now for this one I just go ahead and just turn the TV off and then turn it back on to get get out of there because when you do hit menu it does not exit at all and now you're back where you were so now what I'm gonna show you is three different uh, connections we're gonna utilize RCA S video and component cables so I'm gonna two different things uh, sample some games for each of the connections and yes, of course, as you go in higher connection above RCA, S video is going to look better, and then component cable, uh, whatever you're utilizing with that, is going to look even better. So, without further ado, stay tuned for that. So, the first input I'm going to talk about is the S video. So in this case, I am utilizing my custom built PC, which is fairly modern, an i5 10400 uh, platform but I was lucky enough to find this old school graphics card I think it's like 14 or 15 years old right now uh, that has actually an S video connection to it which is an NVIDIA GTS 250 and then I found an old S video connection with, without any adapters nothing like that just your usual download your old driver I was able to go ahead and directly connect this we're using the S video cable and so far it is definitely much better uh, resolution than RCA when I used RCA adapter for the PC which I'm going to show you in a little while but this is what we have here when you go into your NVIDIA control panel under your uh, resolution settings you'll have these really low um, resolution options. Uh, I am using the 480 by 720 which is recommended but you could drop down to 480 or 640 by 480 right there which is your last option. That's what I'm going to stay with right now. Now uh, when you 
use a modern graphics card with the adapter VI HDMI, which I'll show you in a little while, you won't get this low resolution and it's not going to look as good. It's going to look really, really, you know, bright and distorted basically. Not too much detail at all in there. So definitely you could use S video with your PC if you have the right um, graphics card. That's why this old graphics card, I think you could pick it up for about 10 to 15 bucks on eBay, could come handy. And it's powerful enough, this is the one gig version by the way, powerful enough to uh, run a lot of good emulators all the way up to PS2 maybe. Not, not exactly powerful enough, you might get it in lower settings. But you get my idea, maybe that's your cutoff, GameCube, Dreamcast, something like that. So now let me show you how a game looks like with this uh, connection. All right, now we have a quick sample here. Mario 64. Again, we're using S-Video. And you hear the sound in there and you're wondering how because S-Video doesn't uh, carry sound. That's right. You would go ahead and plug in your audio cable into your PC uh, and then with the white and red sound uh, cable it's you know basically going right next to the S video connection and that's how you get the sound it's really right there it's all in the same uh, input so you can't miss it so you just need that one cable that splits into the sound and already Noticing that it looks a little bit better than using the RCA connection splitter into HDMI. Now, of course, like I said, every time you mess around with different uh, connections, you will need to set up your screen, and you could see that it's, um, you know, it's not done correctly, and you have all these spaces on each side. Also, there was one feature that I forgot to mention. On this controller, there's a 16 by 9 button. Check it out. Look at that. Which is a really cool feature, too. And uh, you could use that, too, for calibrating the picture position as well. I found it to be a good uh, little tool. All right, so now I'm going to jump into the next uh, input. Okay, so the next input we're going to utilize here is the RCA. What I have here is a RCA to HDMI adapter that I just recently picked up just for this at the local micro center for only 10 bucks. As you can see, it has external uh, power connection, USB, connects right to your PC to make it work. And I have it on the NTSC connection and not PAL. That's how you make it work via HDMI into my modern graphics card this time. This is a RTX 3060. Now, in my opinion, I think this will be really your best bet if you want to be able to play all the emulation going higher, PS2, 3, and, and up or so to actually handle that because they are very demanding when it comes to emulation. And also, it's great that you'll get the sound from all of this. No need to connect anything additional. Now, this is the cable I was talking about with the S video. This is what you will need to get the sound. It's very easy. This goes into the computer. And this goes right into the same um, input area where the S video is in the TV. And that's how you get your sound with the S video. Now, here comes the resolution. And in order for you to get this lower resolution, you would have to go to the NVIDIA control panel. Here it is, 480p. That is the lowest, as you could see, the very bottom. And it does come with 60 hertz. Now with the S-Video, when I went to the same option, the max refresh rate was 29, and that's why at the end of the day, I think this will be the best way to do. Of course, you don't need to get such a modern graphics card, uh, so expensive. 
or if you really are on a budget, you can get something cheap like that with an S-Video for about $10 or something. Really up to you how you want to do it. Alright. Alright, so now I'm going to jump into a game and show you how that looks. And also, as you could see, this is what I mentioned. With every input, you set up your picture set, your custom picture settings, especially the geometry. As you could see, everything is full here, and I don't have the little uh, empty spaces like I did with the previous connection. So every input seems like it's it memorizes it in the system when you do that special uh, manufacture menu. So that's something really good to know here. So let's take a look what a game looks like. Okay, so what I have here is uh, Mortal Kombat Armageddon for PS2. And it looks pretty good actually. Let me see, uh, I got too much light here. Let me see. Okay. the light a little, okay, that's a little bit better. So as you can see, it really looks good. And I didn't even tweak the color settings, graphic settings, nothing like that. This is just off the bat. Uh, it fills the screen pretty well as well. Like I said, this probably be your ultimate best option uh, to use this TV like that. Uh, let's take a look here, one thing. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. You see that? That's the 16 by nine. And I like to utilize that too when you go into your manufacturer settings, you see how this is like a fishbowl effect here. You could play around. This would really take a long time, I'm telling you. You'll find out. All right. But you could hide that back like that when I go back to the normal screen. So, okay. That's pretty much it for that input. And now what I'll do is I will plug in a Nintendo Wii with component cables. Let's see how that looks like. Alright, so we finally come into the end of the video and now I am utilizing the very last connections which is the component cable. So I am using the Nintendo Wii with the component cables and I'm running this uh, old Metal Gear Solid game from for GameCube. Why do I want to use this one? Because <clears throat> it does have that option. You could see it. Uh, progressive scan. I don't know if you could see it right there. Which will be the feature right there. There were a handful of games made for GameCube with the progressive scan which really does make a difference now if you know about the GameCube uh, they did have an import component cable for it when it originally came out it was a reasonably priced the authentic ones but now they're like a couple of hundred dollars so going the Wii route and getting the component cables may be your best bet to get that maximum resolution but nevertheless the game looks fantastic uh, this perhaps is going to be the best possible way of you utilizing the monitor like uh, an old TV like this. Now again, you see that, you see these areas here and this is what I talked about. Every input that you initialize, you tinker with it, uh, you'll get that perfect uh, geometry on it and also the coloring. So it is a lot of work to it, but it's, it really is a lot of fun. I definitely recommend this thing. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, I can't believe all the useful things you could do with this um, TV. It's really incredible for 2006. Probably the last year or so for these uh, tube uh, CRTs. Uh, so hopefully uh, you'll get one of these or similar one than that and enjoy it. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this video. I tried my best to go over everything that I learned from this in the last couple of days and utilizing all the inputs. Oh, and one other last thing. When it came to uh, using this Wii, uh, initially when you plug it in with the component cable, everything is gonna be like uh, distorted. So you do have to do that reset, the video reset, where you unplug the component cable from the back of the Wii 
press the reset button and wait about 10 to 15 seconds to plug it back in and then you'll get that good picture with everything working fine. Alright then, that's it everyone. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.